When we are dealing with angles that can be written as 90 degrees plus or minus theta, or 180 degrees plus or minus theta, or 360 degrees plus or minus theta, we use reduction formula to reduce these expressions to simpler expressions with just a single value to concentrate on being theta, which is usually an angle that is acute, meaning between 0 and 90 degrees. Reduction formulae help us to find numerical values of trigonometric functions of angles greater than 90 degrees, to simplify expressions, and to get rid of negative angles and angles greater than 360 degrees. For example, from working with functions, we know that the graph of y is equal to sine of theta. It has a period of 360 degrees. Therefore, one complete wave of sine graph is the same as one complete revolution for sine of theta on the Cartesian plane. We have a sine graph on the left, as you can see and it's been divided into quadrants, from 0 to 90 degrees, from 90 to 180 degrees, from 180 to 270, and 270 to 360 degrees. This should remind you of the Cartesian plane, where we also divide our Cartesian plane into four quadrants, using the fact that we can put different angles in each of these quadrants and we know that the signs of our trigonometric ratios are going to change. So these two images go together, the sine graph and the Cartesian plane. They relate to each other. This helps us to understand reduction formulae very, very well. Let's go through how this works. If you're looking at between 0 and 90 degrees, do you see that your sine graph is positive? And you should also remember that between 0 and 90 degrees, which is your first quadrant of your Cartesian plane, sine is also positive. Then when you move to the second quadrant, which is between 90 and 180 degrees, your sine graph is once again positive. And again, in your second quadrant on the Cartesian plane, we know that your sine of theta is positive. Once again, relating your Cartesian plane to your sine graph you see that if you go below the axis from 180 to 270 degrees, your sine graph is negative. And indeed, on your Cartesian plane in your third quadrant, your sine ratio will be negative. Similarly, between 270 and 360 degrees on your sine graph, we see that sine is below the x-axis. So therefore, in the fourth quadrant on your Cartesian plane, we also see that sine of theta is negative. This is how we can relate the function of sine graph to the quadrants and determine what the signs of different ratios of sine theta are going to be in the different quadrants. This can help us then deduce values or ratios, the sine of the ratio and the sine of theta in the different quadrants. So in the first quadrant, all the angles are less than 90 degrees. Any angle where theta is acute is in the first quadrant and is going to be 90 minus theta in the first quadrant. In the first quadrant, we know that all trig functions are positive. So your sine of 90 minus theta is going to give you a positive answer. Similarly, cos of 90 minus theta is going to give you a positive answer. But what happens in the first quadrant is... When you're dealing with sine and cos of your ratios, and tan as well, we get something called co-functions. So, when you do a reduction in the first quadrant, you will see that sine of 90 minus theta gives you the same ratio as cos of theta. These are called co-ratios. Similarly, cos of 90 minus theta will give you the same value as sine of theta. Going into the second quadrant now, we say that sine of theta is positive, but all the angles in the second quadrant are between 90 and 180 degrees. So if theta is any acute angle, then all the angles in the second quadrant are 180 minus theta. And similarly, let's go into the third quadrant, and there all our angles in the third quadrant will be 180 degrees plus theta, and in the fourth quadrant all angles will be 360 degrees minus theta.
So in the second quadrant for 180 degrees minus theta, we will see that sine of 180 minus theta gives you sine of theta. The function stays the same. It is only in the first quadrant with 90 minus that we can use co-functions. In the second quadrant, your function stays the same, and in the third and fourth also, your function stays the same. So sine of 180 minus will stay as positive sine theta, so that is your reduction formula for sine in the second quadrant. Cos of 180 minus theta will become negative cos theta, as it is in the second quadrant, and we could indeed go through the rest of these values. What you need to remember is that as you move through the different quadrants on the Cartesian plane, your different trigonometric ratios will change from negative to positive values. Later on, we'll look at examples and questions where we use this reduction formula to help us simplify expressions.